I hope you guys can see me all right. I just got off school, fucking exhausted, so I wanted to get this video done before uh, uh, before I uh, got home. So just bear with me a second. Oh god, that coffee's good. Yeah, sorry, I tried to do a, a video earlier, but, uh, uh, yeah, I think I explained it just the data. Don't mind me, guys, I'm, it's been a long day, I'm manic as a fuck. So anyways, I jotted down on some notes, so I wouldn't forget, because I knew after this, uh, I knew after my day of school, that'd be no in condition, no condition to, uh, to uh, remember what I wanted to do the video for. It's, this video is mainly going to be uh, pertaining to uh, how bipolar is affecting uh, uh, my ability to learn um, and taking information to school, talk about health and shit. I just wanted to put this video out there. We're not going to get too much into uh, school itself. What's been going on there? Well, maybe a little bit. I can't remember what, I, what the fuck I wrote down. <laughs> But I thought it was important to do this video for because there's people who have mental health issues who uh, watch these videos. People who are bipolar who do watch these videos. So I want to uh, keep them up to date on uh, how I'm coping with everything and learning and you know processing and trying to make the trying to make this successful. So just bear with me because I wrote some notes down here. All right. So I'm trying to get through this as quick as I can. So I could go home and fucking unwind, you know? So don't mind me if I jump around and, uh, because I just made some notes, I'm just going to touch on everything. It's like not going to be too structured, so just bear with me. Um, I want to talk a little bit about the medication. Like, remember, I was telling you guys on the one I think uh, a couple videos ago that I partied, uh, party with some friends on the weekend, did some cocaine. And from my videos a year ago, I told you how what used to happen was whenever I used it, the next day for three or four days, I would have no signs of uh, uh, no signs of uh, going into mania. It just has that weird effect on me. So, anyways. So that came into play, as usual, and it started to wear off around Monday. But I told you guys I had that other uh, prescription, a part of my bipolar regimen, clonazepam, uh, to start taking that. So when the, the uh, effects from the cocaine use on the weekend wore off, and I didn't say wear off, but you know, it's out of your system. You're not high, but for some reason, it, it, it brings the, uh, the, the mania down. So... The clonazepam didn't prevent the, uh, the, um, hey William, how you doing? It didn't prevent the mania from escalating, but what it did do was it was, it gave me the ability to sleep. So if I didn't have the clonazepam, I, I would have been full mania and I wouldn't be able to sleep and that would have been worse. So the clonazepam did help as far as uh, managing the bipolar from a sleeping standpoint. So I just thought it was really important to mention that. Um, um, some people might say, well, why didn't you take the antipsychotics as well? I mentioned before I couldn't afford them. But Steve, but number two, this is like this is where things get tricky. That if I could have afforded the antipsychotics, they would have put me, uh, the frame of mind they would have put me in was Oh, everything's fine. The world's great. I don't give a fuck. You know, I wouldn't be able to prioritize or take any urgency being on antipsychotics. You know, because I got shit to do. You know, I got goals I need to achieve. And as as much as antipsychotics would keep me out of mania, and everything is great, in a sense, they would hinder my learning capabilities as well. So the bipolar is definitely. I don't know, maybe if so much as the bipolar, maybe it's just the way I take in information and learn. Maybe I've always been that way. I don't know. But I haven't been in a position where I had to learn something new, uh, you know, in like forever. We're not just talking about school. We're talking even on the job. You know, all I did ever is cut meat. So I always knew 
you know, so I guess I, I think you guys get the gist of what I mean. So, but so let's get back to the school thing. So what's happening now is um, I told you guys. Remember, I told you, showed you guys that sheet, the five hundred pieces of paper that I said I was going to fill up. Well, I got halfway done. So I got two hundred fifty sheets. I had to write down both sides. So that's a lot. If you guys really think about it, that's 500 sheets of paper full. And I'm slowly, finally starting to get it. So now it's become, what's happening now is, although I'm learning, I'm, I'm not meeting the time frame. Like, I, I have my road test on Friday. So it means I got one day left to put all that shit together and execute it. So basically, this is what happened. So I took myself off a manual tractor and put myself into an automatic because the thing was the time it was taking me to learn how to shift gears and, and downshift I can drive a tractor I can drive a manual now but not at the level that the ministry needs me to do it I need more time and I don't have more time so I switched over to automatic so it gives me a better chances of passing my road test because, you know, I don't have all the time in the world here. If I had uh, a couple thousand in the bank and I had an extra month, you know, then I would have stuck with the manual. If I failed the test and I just retake it and just get more training, no big deal. But we have to be successful on Friday. We got no choice. That's the position we're in. So, luckily enough, I want to give a shout out to uh, training, Tractor Trailer Training Centers of Canada where I'm going to school. They uh, accommodated me on this. Uh, they did me a fucking huge solid, huge solid, by enabling me to switch over to the odd Mac and, and try to make me successful in this. So big thumbs up to them. So anyone out there who's um, interested in becoming a truck driver, these people really give a shit, and they fucking care. Teachers care, you know. So at first I was really, I just say really, I was extremely Opinionated on the way they structured their course, because I'm listen, because the way, the way I learn, I take the information, and I try to take that information, and morph it into a way that I can understand it, and I know it's a better way of learning because, I think, because I used to teach people too, so, even though they're doing a great job down there, I still feel like going through the process that their structure should have been, a little differently to to help people along. In the short time frame, because realistically, the time you know, there's people, students have passed, you know, all the time. But there's lots of people who fail, so it's the timeline. You got to learn all this information and execute it, you know. So other people have different uh, levels of learning. Uh, you know, some pick things up quicker than others on certain areas, and some people don't. Whatever. So yeah, so I just wanted to throw that out there and just show you where where what what obstacles I'm overcoming through this. So people who can relate to what I'm going through can, you know, yeah, you guys get what I'm saying. I think that's, I just wanted to get this video out there uh, in the middle of this for that purpose. Um, I think that is about it, I wanted to say. Um, yeah, my uh, fucking injuries are, um, are, uh, are playing a massive factor now, you know, like uh, even with the standard. You know, even though I can do it, you think about a friggin' 10 or 12 hour day, my legs just can't, you know, can't hold up. You know, now they will, they'll get stronger as you're doing a job, which I call getting into a work, working condition. Your body gets into work condition, you know, just like if you're out of shape and you're going to the gym, you get, it gets easier and easier. So, you know, that's a barrier, another barrier that I have to uh, overcome, right? Uh, let's see. Uh, good luck on Friday, Scotty. Think positive. I have my B license, and that was tough. <laughs> yeah, well, when I went for my written test, those motherfuckers at the MTO threw me off with all these friggin' uh, B questions because my license over over uh, oversees that. But we didn't cover any butt shit in the class and everything, so lucky enough, uh, I used uh, luck and common sense, and I was able to answer those questions uh, successfully, but... Yeah, people haven't got a fucking clue what's involved in driving a bus, driving a dump truck, driving a tractor trailer. Like, I am telling you, like, it's just, it's it's insane, you know, and you have to relearn your driving habits. 
Oh yeah, it's it's pretty fucking epic. Like I had no idea that it was gonna be to this fucking extent, you know? Because I probably would have said, "Yeah, no fucking way," you know? Like I'm not, I don't have the brilliance to be, you know. Even my teacher was saying, "Don't put limits on yourself." I told him, I says, "Yeah, okay, yeah." For the average person, that may be true. When you're dealing with someone who's bipolar, I have to constantly differentiate, especially if I'm high manic from fantasy world to reality world, right? Because back in the day, I used to think I could do anything and accomplish anything without being realistic about my limitations. It's not that I'm showing being insecure. I'm just being realistic about what I can and can't achieve. You know, so that's where I've grown a lot as far as understanding my illness. Because if I would enter this course without that personal growth and knowledge of my illness, I would have just went through it like crazy and failed miserably. I wouldn't have took time to understand what I can and can't do and proper prioritize and evaluate what I have to learn. So, yeah, it's been crazy, crazy, crazy week. I'm fucking absolutely exhausted. So I just wanted to get that video out there. You know, I was driving home like, oh, yeah, I got to do that fucking video. <laughs> so anyways, I posted on there previously that I would do it. So I try to be a man of my word. We got this video up. You know, um, yeah, so the other thing, too, I wanted to mention, too, like the instructors, too, like we're seeing all the pain that I was going through, right? You know, and he says, are you taking any medication for that? I'm like, you know, you know, that's, you know, that's a double-edged sword, too, right? Because I could easily get painkillers like, like that, right? But it's like, you know, would the painkillers make my job easier uh, to get through this course and be me less exhausted? Yeah, they would. But then would I, would I learn anything? Like with the pain colors would be masking my injuries and I wouldn't know if I was improving. There's a chance of addiction. Well, not that I was worried, worried. We got addicted on to painkillers. You know, we've learned a lot from our past. So it wouldn't be fell in that trap. But that was the other thing. Um, okay. I think that's it. So, uh, thanks for joining me, everybody. Until I see you again, take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Crown bless you all. Oh, someone just put up a note here real quick. I can relate. I don't take meds. They're no help. Well, are you talking about the painkillers? Or are you talking about uh, uh, mental health medication, uh, John? Because if you're talking about uh, antipsychotics and antidepressants, what people need to realize that when you take medication, it's not that... You know, you have to relearn how to live on medication. It's not that so much medications are bad. It's just you have to relearn how to live on medication. So if you've learned how to live with mental health issues off medication, the transition is you have to relearn to live again because you're not, you know, so it's you have to relearn, have to relearn everything. So that's the, uh, that's where I preach where... You have to be in a very structured environment to go on this medication because you, you need your focus to understand they have to relearn how to live on them. So it's like a double-edged sword, right? So I'm open to medication, but my life is not even close to being structured to experiment and relearn how to I can function without medication. I've learned how to do that. Now, if I go on a full medication regimen, Guess what? I'm going to have to relearn how to live all over again. So hopefully that clears that up. So anyways, I'm going to get out of here. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Crown bless you all.